Hi, I'm Femi Oke. It has been 50 years since the start of the Biafran War, one of the bloodiest conflicts ever seen on the African continent. But why does the legacy still matter? We delve into what the pro Biafra movement means today. Now, this is one of the most called for stream programs and has been more than five years in the making. Take a look at just some of what we've heard from you. My name is Chico Odua. I'm an independent journalist. I wanted the stream to cover the Biafra issue because this year marks 50 years since the beginning of the Nigerian Biafran War. And I think it's time that Nigerians have more frank and factual conversations about this crucial time in our history. And I also think that more of those conversations need to happen on a wider global scale so that we can get a sense of closure, learn from our history, and carve a brighter, more harmonious future for all Nigerians. As we saw in the last program, there have been renewed calls for the secession of the pro Biafra movement. And recently, the Nigerian government has responded. Here's the acting president, Yemi Oshinbasho, speaking recently about the stance of the administration. The promise of our constitution, which we have sworn to uphold, is that we would ensure a secure and safe environment for our people to live and work in peace, that we will provide just and fair institutions, that we will not permit or encourage discrimination on the grounds of race, gender, beliefs, or other parochial considerations, that we will build a nation where no one is oppressed and where no one is left behind. These are the standards to which must hold our leadership. We must not permit our leaders the easy but dangerous rhetoric of blaming our social and economic conditions on our coming together. You're all aware that there have been loud and sometimes hostile agitations by young people in the Southeast calling for secession from Nigeria. And then there was the recent ultimatum issued by a group of young people, also from the North, asking all persons of Southeast origin living in the North to leave by October 1st this year. Both of these expressions and agitations from both sides have been attended with some controversial and very hateful language, including patently illegal and violent inducing remarks. I firmly believe that we ought to address these agitations and proclamations urgently and decisively. Joining us for part two of our conversation on the Biafra War at 50, Rudolf Nkwonko. He is a columnist at Sahara Reporters. Uche Mefo, deputy leader of the indigenous people of Biafra. Dr. Uguchi Nkwocha is a pro-Biafra activist, Jafar Jafar, journalist and columnist at Daily Nigerian, and the former governor of Anambra State, Peter Obi. The stream also invited the Nigerian government to be part of this conversation. We have some additional comments from the spokesperson of the acting president, which I will share during this program. Governor, I'm just thinking in terms of being in Nigeria right now, what is the atmosphere like in terms of this build-up, seemingly so, of people from the southeast saying this is our time to get a referendum perhaps to get more attention on our part of the of Nigeria can you can you give us a sense of what that's like to be there in Nigeria right now is it fringe or is it big well in Nigeria right now if I can if I can, if I can get it right what is happening in Nigeria now there's no difference from what is happening before and let me say it again, the, the people are not what, what's the, like I said, these agitations and everything, and I listen to Jaffa when he says every side is trying for marginalization. That is why the call, continued call for restructuring of the Nigerian state is imminent, that we sit down 
and discuss as family how we Governor can Obi. continue to live Governor and Obi. live. You yeah? keep talking about restructuring. Can, can you hear me? You keep yeah. talking about restructuring. We're talking about referendum. You asked about the referendum and, and while you get to that, let me no, make, make sure that we I'm understand one but, thing. But, 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 but doctor, really, uh, at this uh, juncture, really, I may Wait, subscribe I'm, to what uh, Governor Peter Obi was saying because there is a process for everything. If you are talking about yes. referendum, it has to go through the National Assembly in an orderly manner, in a diplomatic Wait. manner. No, not that's just... Not that's not correct. Mm -hmm. That's not people, correct. Okay. Are, people, self, bro, self, self, no, there is nothing like... Self, there is nothing like... All right, gentlemen, Dr. Uguchi, you are saying self, that is not correct. Problem. That is not correct because why? Gentlemen, Dr. Uguchi, you're saying that is not correct because why? Correct. Because, because. referendum is part of a process that derives from self-determination, the right of every nation, every indigenous nation, to determine their faith. And so we're starting from a, a self-determination. And I want to make sure that the Nigerians here and their friends understand that by the fact of your asking for your self-determination, it does not wage war against Nigeria. It, it neither wages war nor peace with Nigeria. It just says self-determination is our right. And we're going to Dr. Gucci, let, right. me this, let me just share this. Let me just share this with you from from the Nigerian administration. They said on the on the question of referendum. Have a look at their their statement here. We believe in one Nigeria. Our strength is in our diversity and size. The majority of our people think so. That was what I was trying to get out of the governor. The majority of our people think so. Says the Nigerian administration. Jaffa. Okay, let me let me let me say. Please let me. We we are not uh, okay, so I, I would agree. agree. I would agree that the majority of Nigerians want to Jaffa, let me hear Jaffa first and then we go to Uche. Jaffa, let me hear Jaffa first. Right? I, 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 heard, Dr. I heard you, Dr. Gucci. Yes, please, please. Yeah, Jaffa, you go uh, first. I, I think, yeah, I will agree with Lao Loa Kondi, the yeah. spokesman to the vice president, on this uh, assertion mm -hmm. that the uh, majority of Nigerians want us to still live together. If, if really you could see, it is the agitation that is not the majority of Nigerians. I heard that comment. Uche, what, where do you want to take us? Dr. Gucci, if, just give me a moment. Uche, yes, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm making reference to Jaffa and a few others. Yeah. If Nigerians are one, and just like Vice President Osiba just said, let us put it to the friend. The truth is that nobody is a Nigerian. Everybody is paying allegiance to his own ethnic origin. Why? Because there is nothing that has bound us together. Mm -hmm. The people who are forcing us to live together are the cabals, like uh, to which Olusegun Obasanjo belongs, and uh, to, uh, to a lesser extent, um, uh, Governor Pito. Before instance, after killing our people, have been massacred, that people have been killed, the blood of innocent Biafrans have been spilled. And none of them are talking about the wastage of that, the spilling of those blood. Uh, people have been maimed, and they are talking about restructuring. Are you going to restructure the lives of thousands but or millions of Biafrans? Men, Femi, let me say something. The truth is that they are not Gentlemen, hold tight, hold tight, hold tight for a moment. Let me just share this conversation. Gentlemen, hold tight for a moment. Gentlemen, 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 hold tight for a moment. This is Brian, Brian Ejiofor. This is what Brian thinks is the is the problem that we're talking about right now. Have a listen to Brian. The argument has been that there is a lack of development in the southeast. Yes, and I think everybody agrees that there is um, a lack of development in the southeast. But everyone also agrees that there has been a lack of development across the entire country. And the, and the, the reason for that is the large-scale corruption that we've had and irresponsible leaders. It is surprising that people think that secession is the answer to the problem because you will still have the same leaders and the same people in government. So it does not solve the problem. Rudolph, this isn't a problem about okay. that's, that's, being that's separate. It. I, Femi, okay. It's a Femi, problem uh, about Nigeria uh, not really uh, working. Femi, Femi, let me let me give you examples uh, of, yes. of things. Yes, please give me examples. I would like some examples. Okay. Okay. Let me give you examples. examples. Okay. okay, Nigeria is please, unjust. Please, a good please, example please. is Jeff. I was talking about Kanu State. Kanu has 44 local government areas. Uh, Lagos State, of the same population, 
that's what he told us, has 20 local government areas. Let me give you another example. In the, this year, the DSS, Department of State Security, they hired new cadets. In Castina State, the state of the president and the director of DSS, they hired 44 cadets. In the whole of Southeast, the, core, the Igbo states, they hired 41 people. So that's not fair. Nigeria has not been fair. That's not, there's no question about that. The issue is that some people, especially mostly from, are not having the, they don't want us to have the discussion about the unfairness of the country. The, when they had the national conference, which Obasanjo had, every president mm. from Obasanjo, they've had a national conference, and they refused to bring people like the Biafran activists to come in and be part of that right, conference. So, Rudolf, let's just slow, slow down a bit for our international view. So a, a national is, conference is, is a really gathering of people and thought leaders really who are looking at the political structure of Nigeria and saying, how can we do better? That's exactly, the idea of a national exactly. conference. All exactly. Right. And, and we yes. had that more than four yeah, of them now. And, and nobody, nobody, they didn't yeah, want and, to And they happen fairly yeah. regularly. All right, uh, I hear you, Rudolf. Okay. Let me just hear Dr. Gucci for a moment. Dr. Gucci and then, and then Governor. Dr. Gucci, go ahead. Okay, please. Please, let's, let's try to be factual. If you say majority of Nigerians uh, uh, do not want a referendum, so there's Biafrans that want referendum, probably 90, 95%, and then the rest of Nigeria. So technically, if you start with, that's a, already a disadvantage. You can't compare what the rest of Nigeria wants with what, the, what Biafra wants, and you say, okay, majority of Nigerians. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's like mm. the, when... When uh, uh, the Scotland wanted to do a referendum, it wasn't the, U the whole UK that they had to call and say, do you want a referendum for Scotland or not? No. Mm -hmm. It's the Scottish that wanted the referendum, and they were the ones that we were looking at. So it's a little bit, uh, I don't think it's fair to say, okay, well, majority of Nigerians don't want a re re uh, referendum. Yeah, majority of Nigerians are not the Afrans. Let me so just share this with you. This is from Must yes. Fix Niger, and then I will go to you, Governor. The legacy is a bigger marginalization of the region. The region suffers total collapse of federal infrastructures. Power should be devolved. That's what we Must Fix Niger says. You say what, Governor? Yeah, it's I mean, that's the, if you look at what everybody's saying here, it boils down to what I, I said before. Because you have a failed state called Nigeria, because the leaders has not been fair, all of us who are leaders, because I'm part of the leaders, mm -hmm. have failed to deliver to the people, is why you, where we are today. If you take the civil war, for example, mm -hmm. and listen to what Uche said, where we're coming from, 50 years after, we have failed to address the issues of the civil war. We will not have I failed. I hear what you're saying. Um, Governor, this is important. This is from Nafu. He says, Peter Obi is part of the leadership. By virtue of that, he has failed the people also. You, you pretty much owned up to that. Where do we go from here? How do we actually fix some of these issues that well, have been going on for so many decades? Issue, like I said, the real is that let, we let need to have... Let, let me hear the fix. Hold on. Yes. visionary leadership in Nigeria that can bring everybody... All the ethnic nationalities are complaining of organization. Some are more like the sad issue, say. But we need to sit down, have a visionary leader who can drive this process and build the country and make the country. We need to love each other, be able to say, listen, this is a country. Come, okay, let's please, hear what please, you're talking about. Please. If but, you have people um, who are agitating, let's sit down and uh, dialogue with let, them. Let me let just sir, say, uh, dialogue uh, it's our business. Be, just a word, really. I have something to add in, in respect to Governor what uh, is just a right at what Mr. Yes, Jeffa. Yes, Jeffa. It is. Yeah. It is. It is really unfair, really, to see that a certain part of the country, uh, or a large ethnic group in the country, is uh, being marginalized. Truly, it is really true that in this. Uh, administration, the evils are not carried along. That is the fact of the matter. It, and it, it may it be the reason that the current, the, the, the current agitations so people at home just said, and people watching, just so you can hear this, Uche says it's not just about this administration. It is about other administrations as well. You are saying that the Igbo people have been marginalized. But a lot of people in yes. Nigeria, there are many, many groups in Nigeria who say that they too 
have also been marginalised. So this is not a political I, I issue I with this please. particular administration. Dr. go ahead. The structure of Nigeria does not work for anybody, even though people think, OK, it's going to work for us, we're going to try to exploit it. It's a structure, basic structural problem. It's not a leadership problem. Do you have problem. a plan beyond the fact that we just problem. want to have Biafra as a state again? Is, do you have a plan that's bigger than that? Or is that the plan? That, that's part of the plan. What's, okay, the, what's the, hope, the plan? The bigger plan is that there should be self-determination for every single nation in, in Nigeria. Once they decide on what they do, then they can go back and say, OK, these are the kinds of relationships that we want to form. So as let me just think this through. If we had self-determination for everybody who wanted in Nigeria, then there would be no more Nigeria. There would be lots of different little states spotted mm -hmm. around. Let me just tell you yeah. um, what the, the current administration was talking about when they were asking about restructuring. They're thinking about restructuring. This is what they said. This administration has so far the best record in the history of Nigeria in supporting the state governments and the National Assembly is entirely free to propose constitutional amendments. This is part of their constitutional roles. Rudolph, yes. uh, this, this is, a, I mean, this is a, is a major issue. It's not just about the Southeast. This is about Nigeria not really necessarily working as a country. Yes, for, for everybody, but mostly yeah. people in the South it's decided that they are, they've had enough of it and they want to take action. And mm. the action they decided to take, most of them are saying that they want Biafra and they want referendum towards Biafra. That's understandable. And you don't, you, eventually what we're doing today and what we're doing in Nigeria in the last few weeks is having a national conference that we refuse to have. Let me, let me tell you, uh, P2B, who, the former governor, who has been uh, talking as if he's now part of the people, the masses, used to say when he got elected that a society that we abuse today, we take its revenge on our children. That's, that's that is what is happening now. Is is the society that people that's like that's like, like the governor abused in the past that is taking yes. that revenge on his children. So, 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 I, 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 I have a, I have a question for Governor V. Gentlemen, hold I tight for a moment, because I hear all of your voices. I, I, I hear, I hear quintet, but no one single voice. Just give me a moment. Let me just, let me just share this with you, and then we can start again. This is Jeff. He says, I strongly believe that leadership is needed now more than ever before. Ending these pockets of agitation require leadership. Uche, do you feel that what you're doing is bringing to Nigeria a pocket of agitation, or are you thinking that there's something else going on right now? We are simply going for uh, self-governance. We want uh, self-determination based on equal rights for every indigenous uh, population in Nigeria. What's the uh, compromise? What's the scared. compromise, Uche? What's the compromise, the compromise position? There's no compromise position because millions of our people have been killed. And as we speak, even though Governor Pito will be participated in killing our people. If he did not kill, what happened to the Izu River uh, uh, victims? He Uche, sat on, remember, this is an international audience. So if you're going to mention it specifically, do you want to just um, Uche, Uche, uh, ex explain fair. what you're talking we, about? Because we, I'm going to ask for a time out just for a moment. Yes, I'm going to ask for a time out just for a moment because I can also understand why coming to any sense of un understanding is difficult if we're all talking over each other. Uche, international audience, tell me why you mentioned that specific incident. Why is it important in about 30 seconds? Right. It is very important for us because today they're talking about restructuring, but they're not talking about millions of people that have been killed because they are asking for their own separate existence. We were not armed. The Biafran people are not armed. Even under Mohamed Buhari, hundreds of uh, Biafran people have been killed, Biafran youth, because we're asking for uh, a right for self-determination. We are asking for self-government. So I asked for a compromise position. Yes, do. Th I, thank you, Uche. I, I, I hear why you brought that up. That? All right, so I, I'm asking for a compromise position. That, uh, Uche, thank the you. The compromise position is to conduct referendum for people to say whether they want to belong to Nigeria or not. That's not that's a compromise. Here. That's not that's a compromise. A no, no, that's it's exactly what you want. That's but not a compromise. It's a democratic process. 
It is a democratic, democratic process. Right. It is not about carrying arm or anything. It is a democratic. Sure. The same way you vote in an election is the same yeah. way you vote in referendum. Right. So that is where we okay, are. Let, at me, the ask, let me add something Nigeria to that. Nigeria is a failed okay. state. Okay. okay, let me add something and to that, please. To if you are in, right, a, if you are in, a, in a relationship that hurts you, what is your compromise position? If you are in a relationship that constantly hurts you, do you have a compromised position? No, you need to get out of that relationship. It's just that simple. Survival, survival, you know, the survival instinct demands think, that. Uh, doc, there are certain doc, things doc, you compromise doc, on, and there are things you can uh, you have on. All right, so, yeah, right. so every now and again, I'm just going to call, I'm just going to call, doc, just gonna call doc, a timeout every doc, now and again doc, so that you can hear us at home, because I know it's very frustrating. Everyone's talking over each other. Do bear with me. Okay, this is Femi Fani Koyode. He is a former minister in a previous administration. He says here, we want peace by restructuring and not violence. Unleashing genocide against the Igbo or anyone else in the North will have grave consequences. A lot of these conversations that, that you've been hearing right now in our show, they have um, resulted in threats. There have been threats from the North to the Southeast, threats in the Southeast to the North. In fact, there was one story here. Let me just share this with you. There was a viral audio message calling for genocide against Igbos in the North. So they were given a, a timeline. You need to get out by October or else. This is disturbing, gentlemen. This is what really worries me about this conversation, not just about politics and self-determination, marginalization, violence. Rudolf? Uh, yes, this is, is the, the status quo cannot continue. I think it's almost dead. Something has to change. If I were the government, this is what I would do. We have to immediately, immediately, because, because the issue of amending the Constitution has been impossible because it requires two thirds of everybody in the Senate, two thirds of everybody in the National uh, House of Assembly mm. uh, in the states. It requires a House of Representatives, two thirds of them to all agree to one thing. And they've been trying to do that since 1999. They can't amend anything. They can't change anything significant. And you have to totally uh, restructure Nigeria to make it even begin to work. So if I were the government, what I would do immediately is to say, Look at look at the all the former uh, conferences, national conferences, the results, the resolutions, and then decide. Okay, this is the bill I'm sending to the national assembly, mm. and we are going to say that we have to uh, get these bills. And I think if the southern right. senators, southern members of the House of Rep, if they team up together with the middle belt, they can actually make a change because most resistance we find is mainly from the north. And it's about things that cannot continue the way they go now. All right, let me, let me, just, let me just revisit no. uh, uh, Governor Obi. Governor Obi, there's, there was something that's really important that the uh, Nigerian administration sent to us on the stream. This is specifically for us. They said, um, this is what we're doing. We, we hear these complaints right now. Let's put up the statement so everyone can actually read it. A couple of things I'm just going to pick out. Um, it's also agreed that legitimate issues and concerns identified and expressed by different ethnic groups will be addressed on their merit and appropriately on an ongoing basis. Are these issues being addressed, Governor? No. Femi, let me start with that. If your name is Governor, I would like to hear. Let's have some clarity. Last few minutes of the program. Femi, yes. Let me just hear some clarity. Hold on one, let one moment. Femi, let me start by yes. commending Acting President Osibanjo for consultation. That is the right way to go. But I also urge him to consult the people that are directly involved, the youth, whether it's like Bob, whether it's the RY youth, whether it's, let them also be consulted, not just the elite, not just us, the leaders. Right. They need to consult these people. So I encourage him to do that. But Femi, please allow me to make comment on what my brother Uche mentioned sure. when he mentioned Governor, the issue of the last one minute of the program, when, make your comment when very we, brief. When we, did, when, we, when we did that, an issue of a zoo river when I was governor, I was away in the UK mm. when I call, I was called on my way to the US when I was called that something happened in a river that is between us and the new All right. Governor Obi, Governor Obi, I am so sorry. We are out of time. This conversation is not big enough, even for a two-episode special on Biafra 50 years on. That hashtag actually has trended uh, in Nigeria and also has been used more than 8,500 times. Please continue to use it online and hashtag AJStream. This concludes our special two-show episode of the Legacy of the Biafra War. Thanks for taking part, everybody. Thank you, guests. Thank you, online community. See you online.